Hi everyone, I'm Heather with the Old School House. Thank you so much for joining me for another Homeschool Live. Today we'll be hearing from Christopher Jansen of the Bill of Rights Institute. Please share this video with your friends, put it on your timeline, let everyone know of your homeschooling friends that this interview is going on so they can come on right now and ask questions. This is a free resource, so you wanna share this far and wide uh, right now if possible. So I would love to introduce Chris to you before joining the Bill of Rights Institute full-time in May of 2017. He worked 17 years in sales and marketing for the Washington Post newspaper and education program. He also worked as an education aide and consultant for the Smithsonian Institute's National Portrait Gallery. Thank you so much for joining me today, Chris. Thank you, Heather. It's great to be here. Well, I am so excited to hear more about the Bill of Rights Institute. I know we had an interview several months ago, but a lot has changed in homeschooling and with your company. So if you could just refresh our memories of what the Bill of Institute, um, Bill of Rights Institute is for those who missed the first interview, and then if you could share with us um, about your resources. Sure, I'd love to. The Bill of Rights Institute is a nonprofit, nonpartisan uh, US history and civics uh, organization that has been around since 1999. We, um, we currently have uh, over 60,000 educators in our network, and that includes homeschool educators as well as traditional classroom teachers. So that means we have over 60,000 folks who are using one or more of our resources in there as part of their curriculum. Um, all, of our, our, all of our materials are free. That's the first thing I always have to remember to say. Because we're a nonprofit, we don't take any government funding. We don't apply for government grants of any kind. Um, our uh, donors are all uh, private foundations or private individuals from all across the country who just believe in the importance of good quality U.S. history and civic um, education. And we strive toward uh, viewpoint diversity in all of our materials. Um, there are over 4,000 individual resources, and I can share some of those with you. We, we used to be a publishing house. We would publish actual physical books. And about eight years or so ago, we decided to put everything on our website, digitize it and make it free. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can show you. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Great. So this is our website, it's brand new. It was just um, revamped uh, in 2020. So just as the pandemic was starting, we were in the middle of overhauling, overhauling our website. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. There's no paywall. Um, we do encourage you to sign in or create an account and I'll talk about why in a minute here. But um, we always put our newest resource on the main page, on the home page. And I'll talk a little bit more about building blocks of prosperity in a minute. But a good place to start if you're just trying to get an overview of the material we offer is if you go to our educator resources and click on the library, think of it as, as walking in the door of a brick and mortar library building. You see all the latest uh, material that we offer at the top here. Um, I'll talk about these in order. So Building Blocks of Prosperity is literally hot off the presses. This is a resource that we um, designed in partnership with uh, Stanford University's Hoover Institute. Um, I think there's a, a real need for really good quality economics resources, and this helps sort of fill that need. Um, it's divided up into six lessons. Each one has uh, seven or eight activities, and they have really great short vi videos that sort of introduce you to some basic economic principles. So definitely encourage you to check that out. This is, by the way, all of our materials are mainly geared toward um, middle and high school. We have very few currently resources for lower grades, um, which I can talk about uh, the, the, the couple resources that we have for lower grades. Um, we're hoping to change that going forward. But for now, most of the materials that we offer are for middle and high school. Um, the other resource that we just launched this spring that we're pretty excited about is The Plainest Demands of Justice, Documents for Dialogue on the African-American Experience. 
So we realize that teaching African American history right now has a lot of um, has encountered a lot of um, let's say political resistance, a lot of people concerned about the teaching of so-called critical race theory, 1619 project, this sort of thing. The approach that we take with this resource is the approach we take with all of our resources. And that is, let's look at the founding documents. Let's look at the primary sources. So the touchstone of this resource is the, is the Declaration of Independence. So each of the six chronological primary source sets address how, um, uh, how the, uh, the incident in history, the events of, of each era of history tie back into the principles that we find in the Declaration of Independence of Liberty. Wow. And so we think this is a really great resource. It's got over 96 primary source sets. So they can look at the actual founding documents and they're designed so that if I could just pull one example here, There are essential vocabulary pulled out. So these are the vocabulary that the students should know before they dive into the document. And then there's a context uh, given to the document itself. And then the actual document along with the source link. So that's pretty much the, the format uh, around which all of our material um, are designed. So these are our featured resources. Uh, all of our resource types are here. Um, individual lessons, uh, primary sources we're really big on, um, current events articles. So we'll take articles from the news and uh, design a lesson around that, which again, connects back to founding principles and civic virtues. Uh, we have a really robust uh, library of videos, and I'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute here. And then we have a podcast called Fabric of History. So as a homeschool educator, if you're looking to, to um, you know, beef up your, your own knowledge of U.S. history and civics, the videos are a great starting point um, because they cover um, various periods from throughout U.S. history. And they also include interviews with scholars. And then finally, um, each one of these are, we have over 25 full curricular resources and they're all listed out here. Wow. If you're looking to just, um, you know, if, if you have a topic that you wanna to, um, an individual topic that you wanna um, drill down on with your kids, say Christopher Columbus, as an example, we have a lot of materials on Columbus, um, how do we think of Columbus? Was he a conqueror? Was he a, was he an explorer? Uh, you know, was he a good guy or a bad guy? <laughs> you know, we don't we don't take positions on these things. We want students to understand that there are different sides to um, to a lot of historical events. In our Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Happiness digital U.S. history textbook, there's a whole section of point counterpoints where scholars um, take important questions from U.S. history, and they take a side. Um, and so students can see that history, stud, the study of history is also a conversation um, between you know, different points of view and different actors. Um, this, uh, no, this I, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. No, this is, this is, a, this is a resource I definitely wanted to, to highlight because um, it is the only U.S. history, AP U.S. history, uh, digital free resource that's available. So if you're looking to prepare your, your kids for the AP U.S. history exam, uh, you don't have to buy that great big expensive AP, a push textbook. Um, everything that you need is here. This is approved by the College Board in 2021. So it has the College Board stamp of approval. And um, you can actually prepare your, your kids to take the AP and, and do extremely well on the AP U.S. history exam with this resource, um, the only free resource of its kind that's out there. So Stephanie was actually asking what I was just about to ask you. 
<laughs> right before you talked about that, could these lessons be used in co-op settings? Because as you're talking, yep. I'm picturing different groups of people taking different sides, uh, you know, using this as debate, you know, maybe one group taking one side, the other taking the other, just to help learn uh, more about U.S. history. So um, is this something that they could use? It's a free resource. So I imagine the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, since I was just talking about it, let's go back and look at the uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So each unit in this resource, for example, if you're starting from the beginning, chapter one, um, you start with the inquiry organizer. So each one of these units has a compelling question. So how did the collision of cultures create a quote unquote new world? So it really is uh, all laid out for you right here, the framework that, that you wanna go through for each one of these units. This is just a sample from the very first one. So the inquiry, inquiry organizers are a really good place to start. Wow. Um, so in addition to resources, so resources is the big thing that we offer, free resources. We also have, uh, events throughout the year. And uh, these are open to, to homeschool parents. So if you're looking to attend an event, definitely check out all our events page and find out if we're coming to your area. Um, most of these are in person. Oh, wow. Some of them are online, like this one. Um, definitely sign up for this. It's coming up um, in a few days here, and it, it will introduce the new economics curriculum. That's a, an online event, so anybody can attend that. But we go all throughout the country. And again, these are free. They're usually in a hotel conference room. Okay. We provide... So do you a, think... Go ahead. Do you think a parent, it would be beneficial for them to learn what you have or how to teach what you have or just an okay. overview of your resources? So, so we do both. We do content and pedagogy. We, we do, you know, here's the material that you're going to use in the classroom, and here are some strategies for how to approach it, how to approach teaching it. And the, the um, professional development events um, tackle both of those. So definitely check out the calendar of events. We also have a number of programs for students. Um, Unfortunately, the contest is on hiatus this year. Hopefully that will come back next year, but we're really excited about this and we'd love to have more homeschool families participate. My impact challenge is a civics contest. And what we're trying to do with this is, is create the civics version of a science fair where we wow. celebrate young people's um, uh, service learning projects in their communities. Wow. The other thing that's nice about my impact challenge is that um, if your uh, kids are involved in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, in scouting, if they're already doing a project with their church group, yeah. um, we just had one of our winners this year was part of a church group that was collecting, um, you know, care packages for, for uh, you know, people in need in their community. We want to celebrate those uh, kinds of projects, and we want to reward them with uh, actual dollars. So wow. the grand prize winner this year, this young man in California, um, he got ten thousand dollars for his for himself American, or for his organization. For his organization, he he partners with chapter of the American Red Cross in the LA region. Um, definitely check these out. That's and then, incredible. Yeah, we'd love we'd love to see more homeschool participation. So this will this will launch um, on Constitution Day, which I'd also like to talk about in a minute here, September seventeenth, and the the uh, uh, deadline will be um, mid May. Okay. So yeah, we're pretty excited. And again, what we're trying to do here, um, and you know, Heather and I were just talking about this before we started. So often, all the money, all the attention, all the the you know um, accolades go to science, technology, and math, and which as well they should. But um, 
the humanities and social sciences often don't get, um, you know, as much love. And so we're trying to change that. We think those subjects are just as important, you know, if not more in our, in our society where we've got, you know, um, we've got a lot to, uh, to address when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to making sure that the citizens of tomorrow know how their government works and know about U.S. history in a kind of, you know, non-biased, direct way. I do have a question about the My Impact Challenge. So I'm just curious about the challenge aspect of it. Is it something, if it's something that a student or a homeschool child is already doing, um, are there requirements for um, how to proceed with the challenge over a certain amount of time or um, yeah, basically the, what would be required to submit what um, your yes, volunteer you'll, services? You'll find all those here. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So they have, it's open to any student in the U.S. and U.S.-based uh, student between the ages of 13 and 19. Um, they have to write an essay and in their essay, they have to explain how their project ties in with the idea of e pluribus unum and how it furthers this ideal in their community. Mm -hmm. um, there's a writing component and then the actual description of the project, 2000 words, and then some sort of visual documentation documentation. So some of the students submitted a video. Uh, I think everybody's, uh, had photographs of, you know, the, the one young man, you know, had lots of photos of him distrib distributing his care packages to, yeah. to people in need in his community mm -hmm. to sort of give a visual representation of what they're doing. So that's all laid out here and then including the judging rubric. I mean, we this gave is just right up homeschool, the homeschool community's alley. Um, so I could absolutely see them really oh, being excited about this. Yeah, we gave out $40,000 this year in, in prizes, both to the students themselves for their service learning projects and to their um, their classroom or parent educator as well. Wow. Got some awards too. So we're really excited about that. That's gonna continue. Also in terms of student um, opportunities, the homework help videos on our um, YouTube channel cover a whole wide variety of historical topics and government topics. Um, every spring we do an AP prep webinar series to help prepare students for those exams. And throughout the year we have um, this, and this is another writing opportunity. So Think the Vote was launched in 2016 as a website, as a standalone website where students could go to get information about candidates and issues. After that election, it was so popular after the, that election year was over, we tried to figure out well, how can we how can we give this thing legs beyond an election year, and so we sort of redesigned it into a place where students can go to get information about current events and also to to debate uh, in a safe online environment with other students from across the country. So every two weeks during the school year, we propose a question based on a current event. So this was the one at the end of last year. Should the U.S. government further increase interest rates? And then students um, submit an argument on the uh, con or affirmative side of each one of these issues. And wow. we curate those and post them. And then the student and their uh, teacher or parent educator receive a $25 gift card and some fun swag um, on, both, on both sides of the issue. Hmm. That That's is incredible. So when during the year do you do this again? Uh, we're launching it. The new topic will launch, I believe, this week. Oh, wow. Through the end of May. So you can see previous debates here to see um, how those were kind of set up. And unlike social media, we're curating the comments. So it's not a sort of free for all. Right. No sort of online bullying. It's a safe, you know, we weed out inappropriate comments or comments from adults who think they can act like their students and argue. <laughs> right. So it's a safe educational platform that homeschooling parents could feel confident and comfortable with their students using. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's think the vote. So I think I think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, 
obviously we're a donor facing organization. So we, we welcome support from anyone who feels strongly that civics in us history needs, uh, you know, needs support, but that's, um, I think that's pretty much high level of everything. I'm happy to, to, uh, to address any further questions or, well, you definitely answered a lot of my questions about how you can help homeschooling families. I would love for those just tuning in, if you could repeat the number of how many resources you have. So we have over four, we have over 4,000 individual pieces of, of content. That includes essays, primary source documents, um, podcast episodes, and videos. 4,000. Okay. So I love how you were... Um, before the interview, you mentioned, you know, not everybody's going to agree with every single piece that you have up here, but you're just presenting the information and parents can pick and choose. And that's what homeschoolers absolutely love, you know, to have that available to them. This is a completely free resource, which is absolutely incredible. And they can pick and choose what they want to use. Um, and again, you said there's AP classes and there's AP training um, at the end of the school year that parents can use. Um, you mentioned that we can use it in co-ops. Are there any other ways that you can see homeschoolers uh, benefiting from your resources? There's something I forgot to mention. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, newsletters that we put out throughout the school year, our educator newsletter and our e-lesson newsletter. Um, and that's a great way to keep in touch and keep up to date with the new programs that we've got coming up. So for example, on the 17th of September, which this year falls on a Saturday, so we'll have the actual celebration on Friday the 16th, um, we celebrate Constitution Day with a live broadcast. And we, we would love for people to tune in. There are going to be interviews with scholars, elected officials. This year's theme is um, around how the individual branches of government work together, hopefully, with each other um, to, to create a, you know, a free and... and just and prosperous society and country for all of us. So that um, is something they definitely want to tune into. But um, if you go to our site, you can sign up in the upper right hand corner of the site and create an account. Once you create an account, you can opt into those communications and you also can create your own library of our resources. So you can begin to create playlists, and libraries of resources that are relevant to what you know. So once you stumble across something out of those 4,000 pieces of content that you know for sure you wanna use with your kids, you can save it to your library and or create it, its own playlist. Um, so that that's that's a one reason why we encourage you to, to sign up and create an account. Not a requirement, but it's uh, it's a helpful tool in that regard. It just seems like your resources are so relevant to our community, the schoolhouseteachers.com community, which most watching today are a part of because we offer so many different resources that parents can pick and choose and essentially create their own curriculum. So this is something that um, parents can do with your resources. They can choose what works best for their middle schoolers, for their high schoolers. Were there Again, were there resources that you had for um, the elementary you wanted to touch on? Yes, um, let me share. So. There's a resource called um, the Founding Documents, React Drama. It's great for younger kids. Oh, wow. So it, it approaches the Founding Documents as three acts of a play. Mm. So this is the best thing that we have. It needs, it's, it's been around for a while, so it probably needs some revamping, but it's still pretty good. I also always recommend um, American portraits. And the thing I like about this, there are a couple things I like about uh, this resource is that uh, they're narratives. So each one of, of the, um, the lessons contains a narrative story about a, a person from um, a different era of US history. And it talks about how their life and work um, exemplified uh, civic virtue and character. Yeah. Everything that we design is designed around constitutional principles and civic virtues. 
because the founders believed in Benjamin Franklin said that only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. So they believed wow. that our system of government would only work if the, if the people themselves were, were virtuous. And the virtues that wow. we talk about are things like responsibility, um, identity, um, honesty, integrity, courage, all of these things. So you can actually teach um, character education by teaching about real people from at, throughout history and how they rose mm -hmm. to the challenge. That's incredible, what an incredible resource. The last thing that I would point out, we just revamped our Being an American curriculum for middle school, but it has okay. a lot of, um, it has a lot of uh, scaffolding for, uh, let me see if I can find it here really quickly. It has a lot of scaffolding for lower grades. So even though it's designed for middle school, right, you can, um, easily adapted to fourth and fifth grade as well. Here it is, being an American. And so these are resources that parents with children of multiple ages would could absolutely use and adapt the resources for each child. Absolutely. Yeah, but it is it is the area where we, I would say we need to, to do more work is, is creating materials for, you know, for, for lower grades. Well, we're having some really positive comments coming, Chris. Stephanie says, my son is watching with me. He says he can't wait to use this and watch some of the lessons. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I want to um, briefly share our YouTube. So we're producing two or three videos a week during the school year. And some of the videos, like the Scholar Talk videos, are more designed for adults. Their interviews with scholars. Um, but these videos, Bridge from the Past, are great for students. They take pieces of art, whether it's a, photograph, a, a, a photograph or uh, the Lincoln Memorial, a piece of architecture, uh, mm -hmm. sculpture, and examines that era of history by looking at the work of art. So Bridge from the Past is a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. And the homework help videos cover either eras from history like Reconstruction or mm -hmm. ideas like freedom of the press, free speech, the free exercise clause. So we have a lot of videos. And the, you said they're geared towards adults, but we did have a question uh, from somebody asking. The podcast. Yes. I saw that. So. So our podcast is is also on hiatus at the moment, but uh, fortunately we have a rich library. I think four or five seasons. Um, they're more toward toward adults, but um, certainly high school students can appreciate them. And we try to take um, with that. We try to take you know sort of um, unusual, sometimes unusual topics from history. Uh, our first and still one of our most popular was about the Salem witch trials. You can see some of the topics. These are fun. I like to listen to them at the gym or on a car ride. You can see this some. This is wonderful. Topics. Yeah. I mean, I, could, I, I like the car ride idea. I could see parents absolutely using this on a long trip, uh, you know, as they're traveling to different places or on a long vacation. Uh, and like because of, education in. <laughs> absolutely. And because of the conversational nature, I can see these if you're if you are going on a long car ride and you want to talk about, you know, yellow journalism and sensationalism and media tycoons. This is one of my favorite. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's a great spring spring springboard for a conversation with your kids about, you know, um, uh, journalism and viewpoint, you know, uh, bias and the history of kind of um, wow, sensationalism really and journalism that our country has. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, that's absolutely incredible. Before we sign off and um, talk about how we can access these resources, I was wondering if you could tell us what you see as one of the greatest challenges that homeschooling families face when exploring U.S. history. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And I think it's a challenge that we all face, which is um, there's so much material. You know, the, the internet, the information age has, has uh, obviously blessed us with a, a, uh, the ability to find 
information, but how do you find good quality information? You know, how do you find unbiased information? That's the challenge. And, you know, we try to address that by, as I said, a, a multi-pronged strategy. Number one, let's go and first start looking by looking at the primary sources, the actual words of the people from the era, whether it's the founding documents like the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, or the letters, speeches, and diaries of someone like Abraham Lincoln or Elizabeth Cady Stanton or Frederick Douglass. Um, let's start there. <laughs> That's the closest thing to a time machine, right, that we have, is starting with the words, <clears throat> the actual words uh, of, the, of the, the people living at the time. And then let's ask really good questions. And that's the other piece of advice I have is that, you know, I, I think we all uh, took history in school, but we think of history as just a memorization of names and dates. And most of those things you forget, right? But what are the tools that you pick up by studying history? The analytical tools, the tools of inquiry that all historians use when they're investigating history. Those are things that we as citizens need to have when we're um, walking into the voting booth or you know, speaking with our elected officials. Um, those are the things that will stay with us, right? Hopefully yeah. if, it, if done well. So, um, so that's the challenge, but there's a, there's, you know, there's, the good news is there's a, there's a solution. Well, that is absolutely incredible. I love that. And I think parents are not only going to use this with their students, but for themselves as well, because, you know, a lot of us are learning history, relearning history along with our kids because we have that rote memorization. So I love that this resource is available for anybody. I love, I love working here because I learn something new all the time from my coworkers, from our, the scholars that we work with, from the teachers we work with. You know, it's, it's, it's a lifelong thing learning about uh, about history. Absolutely. So please, can you tell us how can we find out more about the Bill of Rights Institute? The best way is to sign up for one of our newsletters. So if you go to our website and you put a newsletter sign, newsletter sign up in the search, it'll take you right to that page. We'd love to keep in contact with you and, and we love feedback. Um, you know, we'd love to hear if there's, if there's a, a particular event or subject in history that you'd like to see us cover, whether it be in a video or a podcast, we'd love to hear from you. We, uh, we rely on that, on feedback from, from students, educators, and parents. We see, our, we see ourselves as a service organization. We're here to serve students, parents, and teachers with good quality U.S. history, civics, and, and uh, uh, government and economics resources. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Chris. And thank you everybody for tuning in. We learned so much today about the Bill of Rights Institute and they have so many resources. So I do highly recommend that you go over and sign up for the newsletter because he touched on so many different things. We can't remember all of them right now, but as they go on throughout the year, different opportunities will arise. So yes, please go over there, sign up. Also, if you're looking for a new homeschool curriculum, for all subjects, you can head over to schoolhouseteachers.com and we have the BOGO sale going on right now. You can get a complete year for free. So um, just go to the join out page and you can find the discount over there. And we will see you next time on another Homeschool Live. Thank you so much.